Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Michael Maney begins now. A bushfire has threatened homes in the Launceston suburb of Trevallon. A watch and act was issued for Grenadier Court late this afternoon, with the fire coming within metres of neighbouring properties. The public urged to stay away as seven brigades and three water bombing aircraft worked to bring the blaze under control. The fire has now been downgraded, residents told, to avoid smoke. A 57-year-old man has been charged with murder following a deadly brawl in St Mary's on Tuesday night. Paul John McNally did not enter a plea when he briefly appeared before the Launceston Magistrates Court this morning. The St Mary's man is accused of killing Malcolm Vincent in the altercation on the town's main street. He has been remanded in custody with the case adjourned until April 10. As Tasmanians head to the Easter break, it's still unclear who will make up the next state government. Caretaker Premier Jeremy Rockliffe today played the Easter Bunny at the Launceston General Hospital. Delivering some Easter cheer at the Launceston General Hospital, the Liberal leader playing Easter Bunny in the children's ward, delivering chocolate eggs for all, including first-time parents Jade and Jay, and little newborn Jasper. Hey, you meet the Premier and you look a little bit, <laughs> bit not your best. With his government still in caretaker mode, Mr Rockcliffe revealed that discussions to form government were still continuing with the Jackie Lambie network after the Liberals failed to win a majority on Saturday night. Look, I'm very confident that our crossbenchers, our independents that are elected, uh, those that are elected from the Jackie Lambie network, uh, want to see a very a good parliament, a parliament that works together. Mr Rockcliffe remains confident the stadium at Macquarie Point will be built. My view is that we can work through uh, the stadium uh, with the new parliament and I'm very excited about that opportunity. Economist Sol Eslake predicts it will be a difficult economic road ahead for Tasmania's new government. I think we're definitely now in a period where, in contrast to the years leading up to COVID, Tasmania's economy is going to be performing less well than the rest of Australia. Mr Eslake believes Labor may well have dodged an economic bullet. Well, this could have been a good election for Labor to lose, if there's ever a good election for a political party to lose. Labor hasn't yet determined who will be its next leader. A spokesperson said the party was trying to decompress after a disappointing election result and would turn its attention to the leadership question after Easter. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Kathmandu's founder and former chicken feed owner Jan Cameron has been found guilty of using an offshore entity to hide $14 million of shares. Fronting a Hobart magistrate today, the court heard the 71-year-old used the Black Prince Private Foundation, based on a Dutch Caribbean island, to invest in baby formula company Bellamy's. Information the defendant and her lawyers did not disclose. Cameron was fined $8,000 for making a false or misleading statement and failing to give information about substantial holdings. Tasmanians have channelled their inner Easter bunnies as they busily prepare their tables for the long weekend. Many shoppers sent into a seafood frenzy as the others race to spend on hot cross buns. The Easter staples back on the menu. Chevalin Bakery working around the clock, making sure there's enough hot cross buns to feed the masses. Just today there's been at least 350 or 380, probably I'd say close to like 700 dozen this week. Their Nutella twist on the traditional recipe hopping ahead. They are very popular, the Nutella are always the first to fly out. While bun fans burst through the doors to secure the last of the baker's dozens, it's a feeding frenzy for Tasmanian fishmongers, reeling in a month's trade in less than a week. Really big day, yeah. It's been flat out pretty much all week, especially today. Going cray for crayfish, shoppers snapping up their seafood of choice. It sounds like I keep banging on about it year on year, but uh, the Tasmanian gummy shark seems to be the most popular again this year. With many businesses shutting up shop tomorrow, customers weren't taking any chances, lining up early to secure their Easter ingredients. First customers walk through right on 7 o'clock, really good buzz this year about Easter. Uh, everyone seems to be happy and um, yeah, happy with what they're purchasing. This year's Easter tasting trail, not just about chocolate. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News.
Hobart Hurricane star Nikhil Chowdhury has been found not guilty of rape in a Queensland trial. The 27-year-old faced the Townsville District Court this week, charged with one count of rape over an incident dating back to May 2021. The Indian cricketer was also found not guilty on the alternative charge of sexual assault. Earlier this week, Cricket Tasmania said it had been unaware of the charges. Well, it's a very important, potentially history-making night for Tasmania. The Jack Jumpers could walk away with a maiden championship. Nick Kelly is at My State Bank Arena for us. And Nick, wow, what is the feeling like there? Well, the gates have only just opened, Michael. We're still more than an hour away from tip-off and already there's quite a frenzy whipping up in the air here at My State Bank Arena. I've only seen a couple of very brave people sporting Melbourne jerseys against this sea of green. Uh, there's live music playing, people are shooting hoops. It's a really fun vibe in the air. And why wouldn't there be? Because we're hopefully going to see history made here at this arena tonight. These are the lucky few who were able to snap up tickets. For the thousands who couldn't, though, uh, they're at live sites uh, that have been set up at Prince's Wharf in Hobart and at the Silver Dome in Launceston, where people can come out and sit shoulder to shoulder and hopefully cheer the Jackies home. Now, Melbourne United haven't lost two games all year. That is until, of course, the last two games against the Jack Jumpers. Game three won by that miracle uh, half-court buzzer beater from Jack McVeigh. Michael, the Jackies have already well and truly done us proud, but a win tonight would put the cherry on top and hopefully a nice uh, trophy in the cabinet here. A spud spill has now been cleaned up on the Midland Highway after a truck carrying potatoes rolled on the corner of Piranha Road, 30 kilometres south of Launceston. A crane called in to right the truck with the scene taking several hours to clear. Nobody was injured. Charities have joined forces putting on a seafood lunch in the state south. Salvos is one of many community groups calling for donations and assistance to help out those doing it tough this Easter. Some early Easter cheer ahead of Good Friday. Really focusing on southern Tasmania, where we know that there is an increasing need from families who are struggling with the rising cost of living. Healthy food donations help put on today's lunch, hosted by the Kingborough Salvation Army. The organisation seeing a drastic increase in people calling for food and goods as far as the Huon. So I would confidently say that the need has tripled and, uh, and it's constant. It's not just regulars stopping by. Those who are employed as well as single income households relying on the service now more than ever. We do have uni students come in. We have pet homeless people living out of their cars come in. It's a similar story for Kingborough Helping Hands, who passed on $42,000 worth of food, clothing and donations last year. People say to me, oh, Kingborough's not, not a poor suburb, but there's pockets of, every, in every suburb, there's pockets of poverty. Emergency food relief services don't expect the demand to ease after Easter, especially as we head towards the colder winter months. We're very fortunate to get money in, but it goes out as quickly as it comes in. With all Tasmanians urged to give what they can this Easter period. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmanian News. The Jack Jumpers have a shot at a maiden NBL trophy, but it won't be Tasmania's first. That honour belongs to the now defunct Launceston Casino City, winning the championship back in 1981. The whereabouts of the silverware, however, remains a mystery. In just the second of three seasons in the NBL, Launceston Casino City would defy expectations to land a spot in the NBL Grand Final. Starting slow against the Nunderwad Inspectors before finding their groove in the final quarter. Davies, yes! Ian Davies has seen any shot, I've got a good shot. Romping home with a 20 point win. And there it is! The guys were just on, like um, Ian and Cliff and Jim, and we blew them out of the water. The team returning to a hero's welcome, trophy in hand. They asked the team to stay on the plane, and we didn't know why, and then we were last off, and the whole airport was just chock-a-block full of fans greeting us. It was unbelievable. But in the years following, the silverware vanished, sparking a decades-long hunt. It was in a, um, a stand at the door at the entrance to Elfin Sports Centre and then it wasn't. 
The championship flag was also missing, found a few years ago in a Hobart home and returned to the now defunct Northern Tasmania Amateur Basketball Association. Steve and the guys, you know, um, they were icons to us growing up as kids. Um, that was just the way it was, you know, they won something that many people don't get a chance to win. Before winding up, the association put money aside to restore the flag, which will again take pride of praise in Elfin and build a cabinet for the trophy, confident it too will come home. It's a significant part of our basketball history in, in Launceston and in Tasmania. Someone might have it somewhere unknown in their cupboard like the banner was. If they could, people search their cupboards and, and old boxes and things, you know, it just might turn up. It'd be brilliant. Nick Kelly, 7 Tasmania News. To some breaking news now, and Senator Tammy Tyrrell has announced a shock exit from the Jackie Lambie network. For more, we're joined by Victoria Easto, and Vic, she said she no longer has the confidence of the party. She has, Michael. She says Jackie hasn't kicked her out of the party, but has suggested Tammy should go it alone, adding the leader doesn't have confidence in her ability to contribute to the Jackie Lambie Network's success. Senator Tyrrell will now sit in the Senate as an independent. It comes after the Jackie Lambie, of course, had that major success in last weekend's state election, picking up multiple seats. So a shock exit, an interesting time, Michael. No doubt about that. Uh, this state political scene, it's crazy at the moment. Thanks for that, Vic. Well, the state's leading cancer charity is getting behind the build of a patient wellbeing centre. Tasmania rallying around the initiative with $10 million promised from the Liberal Party. Making their relationship official, she Gynecological Cancer Group bringing Cancer Council Tasmania on board its new wellbeing centre. So we just want to make sure that what we provide is on parity with the rest of the country. Still in the planning stage, the facility will increase support for patients suffering all types of cancer. There'll be a place that they can sit and wait between appointments. There'll also be a place where they can also access uh, counselling support or they can get access to complementary therapies. Around 10 Tasmanians are diagnosed every day. We're not seeing every single person who's diagnosed and sometimes that can come down to access. So having a site that's located directly across from the Royal Hobart Hospital is going to be a game changer. The centre is especially beneficial for those based out of Hobart. The site itself has accommodation there um, in terms of, you know, there's 12 or 15 rooms. We, we'd obviously want to expand that. The build inspired by Scott Harris's late wife Jo, who died from ovarian cancer last year. It's tough and, and it's been a, a long journey for us to get, get to this point, but it's just too important an issue to, to, to stop. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Hello again from My State Bank Arena, where the Jack Jumpers are about to play for their first NBL championship. A win tonight in Game 4 of the five-game championship series will see them lift the trophy, no need for Game 5. But if Melbourne does get the better of us, Tasmania still gets another shot on Sunday night, but they'll need to do it in Melbourne. Marcus Lee won't play here, ruled out through injury and replaced by Lockie Barker. But the Jackies are riding high after leaving Melbourne United rattled, losing twice in a row for the first time this year. Good evening. Hobart, 19 degrees today, but I think things will get hotter tonight if there's some celebrating to do. Let's hope so. Launceston, 23, again the warmest for the state. 20 recorded at Devonport and Burnie. Temperatures within Cooey of average. Grove and Bushy Park, 22. Friendly Beaches and Flinders Island, 21. Lowhead and Lyaweenie, 20. King Island and St Helens, 19 today. And Strawn, 17. We did have some low-level cloud covering the southwest and just some patchy cloud over the far north that brought us no rain at all. Meantime, a large area of cloud is over Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia with embedded thunderstorms, mainly clear over a large portion of the mainland. Tomorrow the high shifts over the Tasman Sea affecting our weather along with the eastern seaboard in a positive way. Those troughs remain over the mainland in a similar pattern to today. The winds dropping somewhat tomorrow are mostly variable, tending northerly in the east, so nothing much to see there either. Let's see what's happening for tomorrow. Partly cloudy and 22 in Hobart, 24 the top for Hewenville and for Campania after lows of 7 overnight. Launceston expecting a high tomorrow of 25 degrees and partly cloudy. Devonport 22, Georgetown 23, all with 11 overnight. 
Burnie expecting 20, 20 the top for Strawn, partly cloudy for Wynyard, 21 the maximum. St Helens tomorrow, a high of 23 degrees and mostly sunny, same for Swansea, 21 the top for Port Arthur. To Saturday and fine and partly cloudy, just a 30% chance of a shower in the west. On Sunday, light showers over the south and east, contracting to the east in the afternoon. And to the holiday Monday, another fine partly cloudy day, temperatures still up into the 20s. Sunny and 27 in Perth tomorrow, even warmer in Adelaide, fine in Melbourne and 25, partly cloudy in Sydney, a shower in Brisbane and a possible storm for Darwin. And still quite calm conditions around the state. 16 in Hobart, 19 in Launceston, 18 in Devonport. Looks like I've been dribbling, Michael, but these three basketballs indicate the six points that the Jackies will win by tonight. Uh, nicely done.